How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Today, I'm going to update you on the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra and the Smart Home Panel 2. I've had these units up and running for about three months now, and I've cycled them over 50 times to really put them to the test and see, are there any issues, or is this a bulletproof system that would be right for your application? So I'll go over both the pros and the cons of this type of system. In addition, we do have two of our older devices, the EcoFlow Delta Pros, which are super popular, and two of those are coming together, and now also connected to the smart home panel too. So you can combine kind of the old and new systems to give you more capability and more battery capacity for your backup application like I have here, or whether you're trying to set up more of an off-grid application. So I'll quickly run through some of the basic specifications of the system, and then really, what did I see over those three months? And do I still recommend this system or are there other options out there? So first up is the Ultra. Now from a weight perspective, your top inverter here is about 70 pounds. The bottom battery slice is 116 pounds. This one battery slice has six kilowatt hours of capacity and you could stack a total of five of these underneath one inverter for a total of 30 overall battery capacity. Now you have DC, USB-C and USB-A out, but then you have your 120, 20 amps here. 30 amp here, but then also going into your 240 volt 30 amp. From solar input capabilities, you have 5,400 watts of overall solar input, which is an extremely capable unit. Then we have the Smart Home Panel 2. Now this has 12 different circuits, and that'd be 120 volt circuits. You're gonna take up two slots for all your 240s. You can bring grid tie in with a 100 amp breaker, but also pull in a generator with a built-in interlock, super handy feature. Now this bottom box is detachable, so you could mount this panel somewhere else and then have your bottom box closer to where you want your batteries. We have this cable coming in from the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, and then this cable's coming in from the two different EcoFlow Delta Pros that we're testing out. And it should be noted, there are integrated relays, but when it comes to the breakers, you can often use just common brands that you're gonna find at your home improvement store. And then we have our two different EcoFlow Delta Pros. Those are gonna be 3.6 kilowatt hours of capacity each. It can bring in 1600 watts of solar on each of these units. And you do need the upgraded dual voltage hub here, which is gonna give you the correct plug to go into the smart home panel too. Now I've used these units in all sorts of different applications. So it's really nice now that I can integrate them into the overall home backup system as well. So going over the pros and cons, but first I've just really set up these EcoFlow Delta Pros. So I'm turning them on kind of for the first time. And what I'm curious to see is how the smart home panel two balances the loads between the ultra and then our two EcoFlow Delta Pros. So I'm gonna go turn on the AC. One thing about the Ultra I can say, which is a major pro, is it's absolute silent. That's not the case with the Delta Pros. So we're gonna have these fans, which are already kind of spooling up, but once we really put a load on them, these fans can be pretty loud. That was a major upgrade for the Ultra. The Ultra is literally silent pretty much under any load. So I adjusted the thermostat down a couple degrees so we can get the AC to turn on and start really loading up the system. Specifically, I wanna see what is the distribution between how much power is coming out of the Delta Pros compared to how much coming out of the Ultra. I'm gonna monitor that with the Power Insights tablet from EcoFlow. Now this gives you all the information that you see on your app in terms of the data, but it also has much better historical data, looking at the day, the week, the month, and going back historically on what are you consuming, what are you producing from solar, and multiple other parameters. So here's what you'll see on the Power Insights tablet. I think EcoFlow is kind of moving towards a whole smart home ecosystem. This would kind of be mounted on your wall. So you have your high level metrics, how much solar did you generate today? How much did you consume today? And at the current loading, how much battery life do you have? Now we cranked our loading up. So let me go to the main screen here. And this is gonna provide you all the different parts of your system. The center hub here is the smart home panel too. We have solar coming in. That's actually coming into the Delta Pro Ultra. Nothing's coming from the grid. So all of the power that's needed to our 12 circuits is coming from our two batteries. If you wanted to dive in and see, okay, out of those 12 circuits, what's actually consuming all that power, we'd quickly see that the Mr. Cool units are the main consumers. Then you could go to your batteries. What do we have connected up? We know we have multiple. We have the ultra coming in. That's where you can also see the solar 
is coming in. 200 watts, I'll show you why that's so low here in a second. And then the Delta Pro, this is my first time running the Pros and they're doing well. I've been running for over an hour, no issues. And the balance overall between the Delta Pros and the Ultra is pretty good. The Ultra is taking a little bit more of the load and then the pros are contributing quite a bit, but are under half of the overall demand. Now the Power Insights tablet, I think where this shines, it seems like over the app is looking historically. So whether you wanna go across the day, so at the start of the day, kind of midnight, I was consuming very little at this house, but then it stops. Well, why it stopped is because we switched from grid to battery. So at that same time, then we started to produce the power needed by the battery. Now why that is, is because I have the settings of my smart home panel two where I keep 30% of my battery as backup reserve. So I never wanna go below that just in case I have no solar and there's a blackout scenario and I want some power for my home. And then I leverage 65% of the battery for powering, self powering. There's multiple different modes that you can set. And this is some of the real advantage of the EcoFlow ecosystem here is the ability to leverage their software. And whether you're doing time of use mode, you want very specific scheduled tasks, or you're just doing a self-powered where the circuits of the smart home panel two will be powered when we're above 30%, then we'll be draining down those batteries and saving on the power that we're pulling from the grid. So overall, I'm very happy with the Ultra, the Smart Home Panel 2, and it's great that now I can have my Delta Pros connected up into one whole system. Now, it hasn't been all perfect sailing. When it comes to the Ultra, I did have three or four times where it came up with an error code 471. Now, I don't know exactly what that error code is. All that I know is that it would shut down my solar input, and then I would have to cycle the disconnect on the side off and then back on and then my solar would come back up. Not a big issue if I'm at the house, but if this is a remote property for you and you need that solar power to charge the batteries during the day and then you have some loads at night and you're monitoring it through a remote connection, well, that could be a major issue because you have to physically be there to cycle that. Now, since the last firmware update, I have not had that 471 failure, so hopefully it was solved with that firmware update. Additionally, I will mention the overall customer support is not fantastic for EcoFlow, and I know that's a challenge kind of within the industry. They always have been able to solve my problems, but sometimes those issues stretch out into days or even weeks. So hopefully that will get better over time as well. And then I know many of you have provided feedback on systems like this and really depending on those in an off-grid scenario and the high frequency inverters on many of these systems being called within question compared to low frequency inverters, which many people say are superior for an off-grid setup where you might have larger loads. So just keep that in mind, do your research, depending on what your use case is. For my use case of backup power and then also trying to offset some of my monthly power demands, this system works perfectly and it really has helped me kind of learn and scale up my system over time. Now, I personally have a lot of work to do on the solar side. Right now, I gotta do some tree trimming. That's why I have so little solar coming in. I should be getting a thousand watts of solar or more right now, but I have shading all over those panels. So I gotta trim back a tree and also add additional solar to the Ultra, but the EcoFlow Delta Pros, getting solar going into each one of those units. And then if I do that, I might be able to offset my power consumption during the entire summer, summer season just from this system right here. Now for me, is this a system that's going to completely offset my power bill? No, that's not the case. I have a heat pump in the winter. It's going to have huge demands and this would just not cut it for that type of scenario. If you are interested in going down that path of kind of eliminating your power bill, you can check a link down in the description. And that is where I started to size out a system for my own home to not only get that size, but also what was the cost after the federal tax credit? What would I be looking to invest so I could start to run some return on investment calculations. And then if you guys still have net metering in your area and like me, renewable energy credits, I would nudge you guys to maybe do solar sooner rather than later because net metering can go away, renewable energy credits can go away, 
And also solar panel pricing might be going up with new tariffs going into effect. But we'll see how that shakes out in the industry. And the last thing I'll say is just look at other truly DIY setups when you're comparing to like an EcoFlow system like this. You might want to look at EG4 is a very popular brand and with their 6000 XP all-in-one unit and their either server rack batteries or their wall mounted batteries, if you want to go that route and you're a little more comfortable with the setup, you might be able to bring down your cost or increase the battery capacity for the same amount of money. So just something to consider and you can look at some of the forums to get a better understanding of which one's going to be right for you. Now, if you need a little bit more information when it comes to solar panels, two videos I'll point you to. This one up here is going to help you understand line losses and what gauge of wire should you have depending on the length you're running from your solar panels to your charge controller or maybe say your ultra unit like the one I'm sitting on. And then if you need an understanding of wiring panels in series, parallel, or a combination of series parallel, check out this video down here. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.